It has fascinated mankind for centuries and has been part of myths and legends since the beginning of time. An animal power so great we couldn't comprehend it until the 20th century. Today on Leo's Animal Planet, we are looking at bioluminescence. Bio means living and luminescence means light. So bioluminescence means living light. Bioluminescence is the ability of a living organism to produce light. Bioluminescent light is emitted by a chemical reaction inside an animal, bacteria or fungi, and it makes these creatures glow. From fireflies to fungi, bioluminescence comes in all shapes and sizes. Bioluminescence is caused by a chemical reaction of two chemicals, luciferin and luciferase. And when these fuse together, it like, it makes light, it emits light. It can be used for many reasons, like camouflage or communication. Let's have a look at communication. Yes, bioluminescence can be used as a way to communicate. Have you ever seen light in a hedgerow or floating in the night sky? Which probably means if you have, you saw fireflies or which are called glowworms. And many of them glow to attract mates. Some flash and some grow continuously, such as the European glowworm. Now, a female European glowworm emits a light but doesn't have wings, while the, um, the male has wings but cannot emit light. So when they fly over the European glowworm, the female, they see the light and they go down and now sometimes fireflies they come together and synchronize their flashing motion and it's a bit like a flash mob the european glowworms and well any glowworm really and the sea firefly they have the same kind of mathematical algorithm and yeah it's pretty cool so their flashing pattern is basically following a mathematical rhythm, kind of. But I'll talk about that in a different video called Maths in Nature. Now, bioluminescence can also be used for feeding and also attracting prey, and especially in the deep. Now, there is a species called an anglerfish, or the American term, football fish, and basically, the anglerfish, it has a little kind of horn on its head, but not really a horn. And there's a light bulb here. And this normally attracts, uh, the light can be used to navigate through the dark, because that's below the sunlight zone where they don't get any much sunlight. And it also is good for attracting prey and so basically, the pr instead of the predator going to chase the prey, it's the prey chasing the predator. Did you know that the split fin flashlight fish has patches of light under his eye, their eyes? Did you know that they migrate from the twilight zone all the way to the sunlight zone to get prey? And the scientists think that this is for hunting, but also for communication. The glowing sucker octopus emits light from his tentacles. And basically what happens is the l miniature creatures go into it and eat. Now, can I just tell you about some amazing uh, uses, usages of bioluminescence? Now, there are these things called sea butter fireflies and basically there is one that can change their kind of bioluminescence pattern uh, to attract mates. But these mates, they're not mates. The mate goes to the light, but when they go to the light, basically the one that emitted the light eats the one that followed the light. Now, if we go deeper into the twilight and midnight zone, we will find that basic, almost all of the creatures emit bioluminescence from the 
from the anglerfish to the squid. They've all got bioluminescence. It can also be a defense mechanism. Sometimes corals and jellyfish, when they feel threatened, they emit a lot of light and kind of like a burglar alarm. And if there's any predators coming to eat the jellyfish, then they would shine so bright that they would want the bigger prey, the, the bigger predator to come and eat the prey for the predator that's trying to eat the jellyfish. This is the case for the bamboo coral as well, which flashes neon blue when disturbed. Or the atoll jellyfish, which flashes so bright when under attack. Another amazing bioluminescent creature is called the brittle starfish, and it flashes amazingly. Now, one of the most amazing features about the brittle starfish is that it's not afraid to lose a limb when it's under threat. Now, they would make their body bioluminescent and then lose a limb, then turn off the bioluminescence in their body. And that limb that they uh, chopped off, it glows for quite a while. So the predator will be lured straight to it. Bioluminescence can also be used as a form of camouflage. Do you know how most predators hunt in the sea? They look at the surface to see where their prey is. Sometimes uh, a good way to stay away from predators is to put the bioluminescent chemicals onto your belly and go right to the surface so they only see your belly and think it's just how the water looks. Isn't that incredible? It's the case of the bobtail squid which uses that technique. And that technique is called counter illumination. The bobtail squid uses a bioluminescent bacteria to light up his body. The plain fish midshipman has a similar technique. The organs used for counter illumination are called photophores. The barrel eye fish has a transparent forehead and his eyes are able to filter green light. So he could tell the difference between the sun and the and the prey that he wants to eat, who is using the belly technique, counter illumination. Bioluminescence is often mistaken for phosphorescence and biofluorescence, but they're actually different things. Bioluminescence is created when oxygen mixes with luciferin and luciferase, whereas bio fluorescence and phosphorescence isn't a chemical reaction at all. It is made by absorbing light from a light source like the sun and then they go down into the deep where the sun isn't there and then basically they shine. There are so many animals that use biofluorescence like seahorses, coral, sea turtles, sharks, jellyfish so many animals use fluorescence like squirrels puffins wombats now let's have a look at bioluminescence in history in 2021 we found a fossil of an early ancestor of the firefly this fossil proved that fireflies existed along with dinosaurs the earliest mention of a firefly that we have discovered was in Chinese poetry around 1500 AD. Did you know that bioluminescence also inspired Japanese legend? Guess what? There is a, a thing called Otaru which are thought to be the souls of warriors who died in battle and the description reminds us a lot of fireflies. Also, bioluminescence is also described uh, in Native American stories of how a firefly once started a fire. Also, in Greek mythology, there are some people who wrote down something called the sea sparkle, but originally it was called the wheels of Poseidon because it was thought that Poseidon was riding his chariot with horses of with fish tails. Pliny the Elder was a Roman scholar who wrote about bioluminescence. In his book, 
Naturalis Historia, which means history of nature. He had the idea of smearing a jellyfish on his cane so it can be used as a torch. In medieval times, uh, medieval scholars wrote all about animals called bestaries, which comes, which the word beasts comes from. And in these books, there were mentions of glowing species that had never been recorded before. In World War I, 1914 to 1918 CE, basically what happened is there are jars of fireflies and glowworms to navigate through the trenches and read maps and letters, stuff like that. Animals who use bioluminescence are unfortunately facing many challenges. But the good news is we can all do something to help. Yeah! The first thing you can do is turn off the lights at home. Light pollution is a big problem, which leads to glowworms and fireflies becoming extinct and their numbers are declining. I mean, the reason why they're becoming extinct is because there's so much light that the, fe the males can't see the females. So they just fly right past the female without even knowing there was a female firefly there. It is also important to stop the use of pesticides. I mean, these poor creatures are severely damaged by pesticides. You can become a citizen scientist, which basically you can join a group that uh, like finds glowworms and stuff like that. There are several in the UK. And they are working hard to keep the glowworms population healthy. Also, even though most animals are bioluminescent animals are in the ocean, there are some things you can do to help them. Like litter picking, making sure, and picking up like litter on the side of a road because that's gonna go into the sewers and that's gonna go into the sea. You can also reduce your plastic consumption and finally reduce the amount of fish you eat. And most importantly, enjoy, tell people about these animals and enjoy them wild and free. A firefly trapped in a jar is not a happy firefly. It can be tempting to catch one and look at their glow, but they are much happier flying free in the wild. Now, this book is what we were inspired by, but basically, I recommend it. It's a really interesting book. Did you know that glowing wounds were a thing in the in the American Civil War. I learned it from here. Now, I'll see you all next time. Bye!